you know, it's a personal thing. I don't want to make a drama out of it. Uh, it's just to remind people that there is a human being behind these glasses, you know. But you still uh, use the name Elvis Costello on the, this album. Is that a... No, I don't. I use the name Costello Show on the... On, because that's just... I'll never get away from the Elvis Costello name. It's too effective a name, you know. People will remember it. It's still easier. The, the reason I changed my name in the first place because it, it made an impact. And people found my real name hard to say. You know? It is. Yeah, it's hard to say. When you say it written down, you have no idea where to begin. I mean, it's as nearly as confusing for you as I'm sure a lot of Swedish names are for us, you know. So I, 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 I employed the Elvis Costello name. Now, the disadvantage of it was that people started to think that uh, I was this other person, you know, that, that there's a lot more to me than that, you know. I don't want to be limited by other people's view of Elvis Costello. The ear. I wouldn't say so. I mean, they're my songs, and... Uh, in as much as uh, <clears throat> where you were born matters at all, uh, I was born in England, you know. I took three trips out to California in order to do this record. Believe me, I wasn't very happy about having to go to Los Angeles, and I, you know, I came back and forward to England. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that you've been a little bit afraid of uh, doing that final big step to record and produce your music in America. You've been in Nashville, yeah, sniffing well, at it. it. Well, no, I wasn't sniffing at it. That was jumping feet first. I'd like to see anybody else go and do that, you know, and get out alive, you know. Right. I think you get a lot of idiotic people who don't know anything making very wild and quite glib assumptions about music that when they haven't really bothered to listen to it properly, you know. Um, at the same time, there's a kind of snobbery can build up if you get... If you refuse to recognize that anything new can happen, and if you refuse to recognize that somebody that can't play an instrument and really can't sing very well is just capable, is just as capable of making a great record or writing a great song as the most technically brilliant player. It's a, it's a difficult balance, but I've always tried to keep a clear head on it. Haven't always succeeded, but you know, you don't always succeed in life, you know. I think there was another version for, of that song to be done. I don't want to be misunderstood. I mean, I worry about the little sinful things that I've done, don't you? Baby. This year, you'll be... You've been a professional artist for 10 years. It's 10 years anniversary, if you want. Do you feel that these are 10 years that have Actually, passed? Actually, nine years. It's nine years. I was a professional musician in 1977, so I've got a year to go yet before I clock up my, my decade in, in music. I made my first record in 1976. At the end of 76, I started making it, but I wasn't a professional musician then. I was still working in a day job. So I've actually got a few years to go before we start looking back and being all nostalgic and everything. And I won't be there. There'll be somebody holding a party, a nostalgic party for my 10th anniversary, and I won't be there. <laughs> Do you feel that these nine years have passed quickly? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think they would have passed quickly if I'd been in some other job, um, because they just do. That's what they tell you about life, you know. It seems an eternity when you're an unhappy teenager, you know, uh, wor worrying whether your girlfriend, that you're ever going to see your girlfriend again, or whether you're going to pass your examinations at school. You think you're never, ever going to get past 15, you know. And then between 20 and 30 seems to go by, in a, in a wink of an eye, and I suppose between 30 and 40 is going to go quicker and then you die, you know. Uh, or not at 40, but, you know, sort of like, life goes quicker and quicker. And hopefully it gets better and better. It's getting better for me, you know. I, I, I've i made a lot of mistakes and there's been some unhappiness in, in this time, but there's been a lot of good things as well. And uh, there's, not, there's very little I would change. Uh, this is just what happened, you know. Elvis Costello. The ones that I'm least satisfied with are our armed forces, which is very much a 1979 record. That doesn't excite me now to hear it. I liked it when I did it, and it was what I meant to do. It's not for me to say whether something that I do is timeless. I think that the records that I prefer of my own are the ones that stand aside from time, which is not the same thing at all. My personal preference. It's not to say that other people won't enjoy those records. They obviously have done, because people have bought them, you know. And a lot of people tell you that's my favorite. And I don't want to sort of insult them by saying, oh, that record's terrible, you know. Um, it's just not my personal preference. I prefer the records that don't compete with the year that they're in, you know. It's always interesting to ask a singer about his own voice. What, what is your opinion of your own voice? Well, I think on this record I sing about as true to the songs as I've ever done.
well, they're going to be very wrong because we're going to go and make another record next week. So, um, <laughs> so they're completely wrong. You know, I mean, a lot of people have been reading all kinds of stuff into into my absence from uh, public uh, life. But, I mean, I worked very hard last year. I I, I, I produced uh, the Pogues album, uh, Rum Sodomy and the Lash, and I and, and I wrote and recorded this record. I produced the Coward Brothers single, and I did a tour down in Australia. Uh, uh, you know, in preparation for this album. Uh, so people sort of assume that I've I've been some wreck of a man living in in secrecy somewhere, and that the attractions all hate me. And you know they've been busy doing other things. Steve and I have made a record, um, and the others have been working on things you know which are personal to them. And you'd have to ask them about them. You know, this new album, King of America, is very acoustic. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the most acoustic album you ever made. Certainly, yeah. I had my electric guitar stolen when I was in Australia. You know, this is perfectly true. Everybody thinks this is a joke. And and I hadn't time to adjust to a new guitar. I've got several guitars, but that one had become the one that I was familiar with. And as as I'm not a very good instrumentalist, uh, you know, I have to rely on a real feeling for the instrument. And I would have perhaps made played more electric guitar on it, but it just seemed more appropriate to the songs to use the acoustic guitar. It fitted better with the voice, and I had really good guitar players playing on the record. There will, of course, be people saying that this album is uh, very much folk influenced. Would you agree? Well, the, the, all of my songs sound like folk songs when I first write them. If I write them on the guitar, you know, um, I, I wrote most of the Imperial Bedroom album on the piano. But other than that, I've written most of my albums on the guitar. The odd song, maybe, I've resorted to the piano. But as I know, I don't play. I play the piano even worse than I play the guitar. Uh, it's not a, um, you know. Generally speaking, uh, the rhythmic songs tend to be written on guitar. And if you, if I were to sit in the room and play you almost any song from any of my records, you'd say, "Oh, that sounds like a folk song." When you play it on acoustic, but obviously, when you uh, arrange it with an electric band and electric keyboards, particularly with the attractions, it loses that folk quality. Whereas on this album, because it's an acoustic guitar playing, it it retains something of that intimacy that you have in folk music. So, would you define folk music only as a question of arrangement? Mm, the folk music is. Oh, everything's folk music. Louis Armstrong said everything's folk music. I've never seen a horse play music. You know, it's all folk music. F folk play it. You know, <laughs> I mean that's the answer. You know, there are different th different trends in 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 music from time to time, and I, I've always stuck by the song. The song has always been the thing for me. But for other people, it isn't so important. You know, some people it is technique. Some people don't really think of the song. They just think of it as a springboard for their playing. Uh, even singers are just think of it as a springboard for their vocal technique. Now that doesn't excite me. There are modern groups who make pieces of music, which are some of them are quite thrilling, but they don't really write songs. And the, and uh, uh, some of them will actually acknowledge that. You know, like U2. Bono did actually say that Pride was the first true song that U2 had written. They constructed pieces of music, some of which were very attractive and very thrilling. But he does recognize the distinction between the construction of a song. Which is something that you can recognise. Uh, it has some shape to it, and a, and, a, and a more general piece of music. You know, both things have a virtue. I'm not saying that my way is right and everybody else is wrong. It's just uh, I have always valued the song because I know how to write them. Oh, I'm not. Uh, the name credited on the record is Declan Patrick Aloysius McManus, but it's Declan McManus. It's easy enough to say. You know, Declan. I am literally going to make another record uh, right away. I've We're got a lot of songs. Which I left off this album uh, con consciously because they would have undermined the feeling of the record, which is a more open feeling. I'm not saying it's going to be mean and spiteful entirely, but it, it's maybe darker than this record, you know. And um, then I'll see what I'll do after that. Maybe, maybe I'll tour. Maybe I won't. Who knows? That album will be with the attractions. Have you just yes. decided upon that? Yeah, we start next week. We really do. We start on Monday. You're not a lazy character. No, far from it. I love work. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure.